I have no issues with Lamar not being there. John Harbaugh has no issues with Lamar Jackson not being there. And also, Lamar Jackson has been there for some OTAs for the last several years and has still played great. I mean, I really don't care who we play. You know, it really didn't matter. You know, at the end of the day, our goal is to make it to the Super Bowl. We lost to them in the playoffs. I do remember, I do recall Derrick Henry arriving in Baltimore. Lamar Jackson has Derrick Henry to give the ball to. You know, you guys, I'm just going to go ahead and jump straight into the Baltimore Ravens at this point because this team really has put together a great offseason, especially when you compare it to other teams around the NFL. And I think with everything they've done so far, their team has gotten better. They've made big-time additions on the offensive side of the ball, and they've made big-time additions on the defensive side of the ball. And as crazy as it might be to say, I think this team could arguably be better than they were last season. I know that sounds crazy due to how good and how dominant the Ravens were, but I really do think it's a possibility. So if I was a different NFL franchise, I'd be extremely worried about what the Baltimore Ravens are currently cooking up. But before we get into why I believe that, if you like Baltimore Ravens content just like this, make sure to go down and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any Ravens videos for the remainder of this offseason. Okay, so to get back on topic with the Baltimore Ravens, this team, of course, is coming off a super dominant regular season where they got the number one seed and they ended up making it to the AFC Championship in the playoffs where they barely fell short to the Kansas City Chiefs. I don't think anyone would disagree with me when I say I think the Ravens were the better team in that game. They just didn't show up to play and it cost them the loss, which obviously sucks. Now, even though that sucks, you still got to move on and you still got to find a way to go in the offseason and get better so that same situation doesn't happen in the future. And I I think that's exactly what the Ravens have done. To start, man, I want to talk about this offense because they made one big addition this offseason that I'm sure you can already guess, and it's just the addition of one of the best running backs to ever play in Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry is a guy that's put up great numbers year in and year out ever since he's gotten in the league, and he hasn't slowed down much even though he might be 30 years old. He hasn't lost much juice at all, and the fact that he was able to put up the numbers he did last year behind a terrible Tennessee Titans offensive line is just unbelievable to me, and it makes Makes me wonder what he's going to be able to do in this Baltimore offense. We've seen the Ravens have one of the best rushing attacks in the league multiple years in a row now, pretty much ever since Lamar Jackson has gotten in the league. And to be able to add a guy like Derrick Henry to that is almost going to guarantee that you have the best rushing attack in football. And when you have a great run game, everything else on the offense is going to follow. Derrick Henry, of course, is going to be your lead back. And then I think your secondary back is going to be Keaton Mitchell because this guy, when he got opportunities last year, absolutely shined. And that is seen by the fact that he averaged well over eight yards per carry. If that doesn't show you how explosive and how efficient this guy is, I don't know what will. So I think pairing him with a guy like Derrick Henry is a match made in heaven, and we're going to see Todd Munkin be super creative in the way that he does that. I expect a lot of two-back sets and a lot of one-back sets where these two guys are mixed in, and then you mix in Lamar Jackson with them just to make the defense confused, and I don't think many defenses are going to have an answer for it. And when you add on top of that that you're also going to have a passing attack that's extremely good because not only do you have a great pass blocking offensive line, but you also have a quarterback that's gotten better at passing the football year in and year out in Lamar Jackson, and he is going to make sure that this passing attack is pretty good. I mean, your quarterback is coming off a season where he won the MVP, so I expect him to come in and play at that same level in the upcoming year, and if he does that, this offense is easily going to be a top five unit in the league. Your number one receiver, of course, is going to be Zay Flowers, and as good as that guy played last year, I think he still has a bunch in the tank, and I think we're going to see him get even better in year two to give Lamar Jackson a real number one receiver to work with. I know he doesn't have the ideal size to be a number one receiver, but he definitely has the juice to be a number one receiver, and I expect his targets to go up even more in his second year. And then to pair with Zay Flowers, you're going to have Rashad Bateman, who I know people have questions about, but I think this guy did show some flashes last year, and with him going into his fourth season, he's probably going to have the best year of his career this year, if I had to guess. So hopefully he'll take a pretty big leap, because that's going to help this offense a ton. And then to give yourself a third option, you went out and you signed that guy, Deontay Hardy, who's more of a gadgety guy that I think Todd Munkin wanted so he could be creative with him and use him in a ton of different ways to try to mix up the defense even more. He's a pretty electric guy that can make people miss in the open field, so getting this guy the ball in jet sweeps or bubbles is a really good idea, and I think that's probably how they're going to plan on using it. Not to mention you moved Malik Cunningham to receiver, so who knows what he's going to bring to the table, and you drafted that guy, Devontae Walker, in the fourth round, which I think was an absolute steal of a draft pick with all 
all things considered. This is a guy that has great size at 6'2", 200, and he has elite speed, so he's going to be able to beat you over the top. He just has a little bit of a drop issue, so if he can fix that, I think this guy really could come in year one and have a huge impact. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw this guy starting outside at receiver in week one due to how talented he is. So I love that the Ravens went out and took this guy. Now, even though I'm pretty confident in this receiver room, I think the strength of this passing attack definitely is at the tight end position with Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely. Mark Andrews, of course, has already proven himself to be one of the best tight ends in all of football. And then Isaiah Likely, man, stepped up last season when Mark Andrews went down with his injury and played extremely, extremely well. So I also expect this Ravens team to come out in a lot of two tight end sets because the defense is never going to know if you're running the football or you're throwing the football. And both of these tight ends are going to do a great job at finding ways to get open. And when you pair that with the receivers, with the offensive line, and with this running back room, I think this offense, like I said earlier, is easily going to be one of the best in the entire league. And man, when you pair an offense that's going to be one of the best in the league with a defense that's also going to be one of the best in the league, your team becomes a championship contender. And I think that's exactly what the Ravens have once again. When it comes to the defensive line, I absolutely love what you have here because you're still going to have Odafe Owe. You brought back Kyle Van Noy, who is a great veteran to have. You still have David Ajabo, who is another guy I think has untapped potential. And you went out and drafted Adisa Isaac, which is another huge steal in my opinion in the third round to add to what you already had in this edge room. So the edge group is looking pretty good to me and I think they're going to be able to get after the passer at a pretty consistent rate. And when you move into the interior, it gets even scarier because you of course still have the veteran Michael Pierce. And then you also have the guy, Madu Bike, who absolutely broke out last year, putting up double digit sacks, who you signed back to an extension. I mean, this guy was an absolute freak all year long. So the fact that you're still going to have him and Michael Pierce on the interior to pair with all of these edge guys is just absolutely unfair. And it makes me think there's no way that this defensive line doesn't put up great sack numbers once again. I know you lost Mike McDonald, who played a big part in this pass rush last year, but I'm pretty confident in Zach Orr especially since he learned under Mike McDonald, and I think he'll be able to come in and simulate the same type of thing. And if he does that paired with what you have behind this defensive line, that's when this defense really starts to come together. You, of course, at the linebacker position, have Roquan Smith, who played absolutely outstanding for you, and that trade looks better and better every single day. And then even though you lost Patrick Queen, you have a guy coming up to fill his role in Trenton Simpson, who I'm extremely excited about watching. We didn't get to see this guy get a ton of snaps in his rookie year due to him having two great linebackers ahead of him, but this guy was taken in the third round last year because he was an athletic freak and he had great tape in college, and I think we're going to start seeing that shine through as he becomes a starter. He's going to be a perfect backer to pair with Roquan Smith, and that's going to make not only this pass rush great, but also this run defense extremely elite. But even though the front seven is so, so good, they didn't have to make any moves there to make that group better. They were already pretty good, but when it comes to the secondary, they did make some moves here that I absolutely love, and that starts with drafting Nate Wick in the first round. The fact that this guy fell all the way to pick 30 to the Ravens is absolutely unbelievable because this guy's tape is out of this world and considering this guy ran a 4-2-8 at the combine, he's going to come in and immediately be extremely good. He has really fluent hips so he can turn with a burner and he has pretty good size at 6-2. He just needs to add a little bit of weight in my opinion and he is going to be the full package. I can't imagine being an offense that has to go against Marlon Humphrey on one side and Nate Wiggins on the other because that is going to be one scary sight. And then when you pair with that, you still have Arthur Mallett, who played really good for you last year. And you got another steal of a draft pick and TJ Tampa all the way in the fourth round, who's super physical, has great size, and is pretty athletic as well. And that just helps round out this corner room to pair with Kyle Hamilton and Marcus Williams at safety. Kyle Hamilton is probably the best safety in football right now, if I had to say so myself. And Marcus Williams is a great secondary safety to pair with Kyle Hamilton. And that just makes this secondary even better. I think they're going to be completely locked down. And if you have a lockdown secondary with this front seven, things are going to get scary really, really fast. And when you pair that with an offense, it not only has Lamar Jackson on it, but also has Todd Monk and Colin plays and a lot of talent around him. You shouldn't have much trouble making the playoffs and finding a way to go deep in the playoffs. And I think that's exactly what we're going to see the Ravens do with a chance once again to go to the Super Bowl and hopefully win it.